Masood, uh, I know this is a topic that uh, throughout your time at the IMF, but of course now also uh, is uh, you know, occupying your thoughts. Uh, and, and I would like to get your take on where you see the topic of AI and future of human labor headed. Masood. Thank you very much, Ali. So first of all, as Ali said at the beginning, you know, artificial intelligence is playing a role in our daily lives in many, many ways. And uh, almost every day now, if you open the newspaper, you will see some article about how self-driving cars are going to use artificial intelligence, and that's going to have big consequences for the three million people who work in the transportation industry in the US, for example. But I think the, the point I want to make is that the development of AI will affect the future of work far more broadly than what you see at the moment. Uh, there's been work done uh, by uh, academics uh, which suggests that in the US, for example, almost half of the occupations are going to be impacted in a major way by artificial intelligence. OECD has done a lot of work, and, and Mari is going to present it shortly, which will show that in OECD countries, more generally, we're going to find many, many occupations that range across the board, which are going to be impacted through the development of AI in ways that we can anticipate and in ways that we cannot yet anticipate, because AI is developing so fast. But I want to say to you that this is not simply an issue for the OECD or advanced economies. Artificial intelligence is going to affect the nature of work in developing countries and emerging markets, and those countries and markets are in many ways less prepared for the consequences of, our, of artificial intelligence. Adidas makes 300 million pairs of shoes every year, employing about a million people mostly in Asia and in Africa. Last year, they opened a factory in Germany, which produces 500,000 pairs of shoes using robots. This year, they're producing a factory in Atlanta, which will do the same thing. Now, question. 10 years from now, will robots be producing 3 million out of 300 million pairs of shoes for Adidas, or 200 million out of the 300 million pairs of shoes that Adidas produces? And if so, the million people that are now working on producing shoes in Vietnam, in China, in Africa, will they be retrained to do something else, or will they not have jobs? So will they have new jobs or no jobs? And what does that mean? for countries like Ethiopia, countries like Kenya, countries like Senegal or Vietnam, which are now thinking about their development strategy. Traditionally, when you thought about development, development was basically done by taking surplus labor, which came from agriculture, when agriculture became more productive, and you moved them into light manufacturing. But if light manufacturing becomes increasingly done by robots and through artificial intelligence, that rung of the development ladder disappears. So where do these people that come off from agriculture go? Are they immediately going to jump into high value added, more sophisticated manufacturing and services? Do they have the skills to do that? Do the education systems that are struggling even to equip people to do the simple manufacturing, are they going to be able to give them the skill set that they need to be able to take on the new jobs that we're all struggling to define? Another dimension of this, and I'm going to stop after that, another dimension of this is, how are we going to cope with the fact that many people during this transition, this is a much faster industrial transition than the three industrial transitions that we have seen in the last 300 years. Because it is the happening in a, within one generation, it affects all nature of our work, and many of the people are going to find that they cannot retrain themselves fast enough to take on the new job. So concept comes up, how are we going to deal with that? And one issue that people are thinking about is to introduce a universal basic income, which is to say everybody should have some basic income. 
Now, it's an interesting concept, but I think it raises many questions about is it affordable, is it feasible, can a country like Senegal or, or, or Kenya or, or for that matter, a larger country like Pakistan uh, be able to introduce a universal basic income when they don't even have a universal safety net? So I think artificial intelligence is happening. It is coming at us much faster than we anticipate. I personally believe that the people who are complacent and saying, no, 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 we have gone through this in the past and you know, we are going to manage it, are kidding themselves. I think when it comes, we're going to find that our institutions are not strong enough to deal with it. It will create a great deal of social tension in our societies because young people who are coming into the labor market will not have the skills to be able to take on the jobs and the jobs are going to be migrating out and we need to start planning and preparing for it. I'm not suggesting you try and stop it. It is, a, on balance, it will add to our productivity and to our ability to live better lives, but to do that, we need to equip ourselves now and to make this much more of a national agenda. And I think a panel like this is a great way to get us started into that discussion.